Big Papa's in the house. Yeah, what do you think of that big fella? Thirty-six got to figure it out real quick. <laughs> So it was kind of late when he was able to get him out here. It's just the timing of when I got off work and everything. It was super hot. You don't want to move them when they're super hot. There's one of them there. There's the other one. He's in there. <laughs> Checking out that white cow. Um, they'll get heat stress. It's just a bad deal all the way around. Bad for them. Bad for me. So I had to wait till it cooled down. It has been hot. So my sister was asking me, how do you introduce you know bulls to a a herd of cows you have to like do it slowly you put the bulls on the other side of a fence or something and i can see why you might think that but the answer is no <laughs> no don't do that <laughs> if you put bulls on that side of that fence with a bunch of horny cows over here they'll have that entire fence tore down by morning so you put them right here with the cows they'll herd them up and start uh well being herd sires <laughs> oh don't look at that yet sneak peek i got a new toy she has that later. Uh, they're all down there. Let's go check out these bulls and uh, we'll go talk about them real quick. Try not to bother them. The mornings and evenings is typically when they're getting worked on. So we'll go down there and get you guys a good look at them though real quick and, and talk about why I decided to go with Charlotte bulls instead of Angus like most people do. What's up, number 43? Some face flies on you. I need to fix that. <laughs> not her. He's right behind her. Eating. There's one of them. And there, this one right there. Oops, sorry. Look at him. Big old fat head. <laughs> Very cool. So, why Charlotte's? So, first of all, my uh, Charlotte cow's here. 43. Um, not so much like number two. See how she's darker? So she's a, a Charlotte Black Angus cross, right? You mix her with him, move 19, <laughs> and you get these type of cows. Her and number 36, is right there, have been two of my best mamas that I have out here. And then this girl here as well, that Brahmin. And so you put a, like a Charlotte or an Angus on, on that Brahmin cow and get a crossbreed and they just perform really well so you don't have as many uh disease issues right they're more more disease resistant um, they're a little bit hardier what's up buddy there he is <laughs> and they're they're better mamas too than these black angus girls so the thing about black angus you know everybody likes them but honestly it's just really really good marketing that set of nuts on them <laughs> love it it's good marketing by uh, the Angus Association, right? Um, they've got restaurants to, to advertise that, but reality is that, you know, a thousand pounds of steer, if, if it's raised well and fed correctly and healthy, it's going to be good, good to eat, <laughs> no matter what color it is on the outside. So there's some other characteristics that you can try to breed for, but whenever you specifically breed Angus, Where's a good example? Well, 19, right here. They have this kind of Angus uh, butt that people really like, and, and that's cool and all, but the problem is, uh, in order to keep that, that characteristic, let's see, look at her. She is a stud of a cow, too. Right? In order to keep that characteristic, you basically have to uh, inbreed them. <laughs> and so, I mean, if you think back, even people back like uh, Victorian era, right? There's a lot of inbreeding going on. What do you get? Well, you get a lot of mental illness. You get a lot of physical illness. You start having sickly children. Uh, the same thing happens with cows. So you start having more problems, uh, weaker immune systems, and they're crazy. They are literally crazier. The craziest cows that I've got out here, and I got rid of some of them <laughs> because they were crazy, but uh, they were purebred Angus, or close to it anyway. Not quite pure, but close to purebred Angus. And the same thing over at my neighbor's place. 
uh, one cow that almost trampled me in her pins was solid black, looked very much like an Angus, had just a touch of ear on her. Now, there's a common misconception about these Brahmins. People think that they're mean and that they're crazy, but, I mean, they're really not. She's a great cow. Get her, dude. <laughs> um, so they're, they're not crazy, um, maybe unless they're purebred, and she's not. She's probably three-quarter Brahmin and uh, probably, probably Angus. So purebred cows you just have more problems with them so what i want to do ultimately is have crossbreeds what i would had originally thought that i wanted to do was have charlotte cows with uh brahmin bulls on them but after keeping that brahmin cow as easy a keeper as she is she's just done really well her calf's done really well didn't have any problems i've never had to treat her with anything um i, I mean i've dewormed her just because i dewormed all of them and uh vaccines and just normal stuff but i've never had to treat her she's never been sick and her calf was the same way never once got sick what's up 42 i had a lot of problems with your calf your calf was sick a lot and all these angus cows <laughs> all their calves were were sick all the time so constant problems with pink eye problems with pneumonia i lost calves to it didn't catch it fast enough and it's hard for me to do just because I have, a, I have a day job. I work four days a week, 10 hours a day. So most days I'm gone most of the day. So I can't catch those problems fast enough sometimes and uh, you lose animals to it. So what my hope is, is that having these Charlotte uh, bulls on all these black and red cows, um, I'm not going to have some of the same issues as you get with uh, just straight breeds. Now, I may run into those same problems on these Charlottes. <coughs> So we'll, we'll see. That'll be interesting to find out. <laughs> Look at him loving on her over there. Hey, baby. <laughs> now, none of these Charlays are true, you know, purebred Charlays. Like this one, number 44 here, she's really close, but she's just got a touch of red up on the front half over there. So she might be have a little bit of red Angus, and she's almost got ear on her. Not quite. So she might have some prominent influence in there as well what i've thought though is that instead of having the uh charlotte cows and running brahmin bulls what might work out better for me is if i run brahmin cows with charlotte bulls and so getting these guys out here i'm really curious to see how they do on that brahmin cow over there really want to see what they do and i think and even the guy that i bought them from looking at some of these girls number 43 she's walking away from me over there and uh other ones number 45 right there number 41 that might be her right in front of us yeah it looks like her and this one walking away from me i think that's 48 like they ought to make some really good um charlotte calves either steers or heifers and that would be fine as well um the other thing uh charlotte bull on uh black white faces i can't see any of them right now i got a few of them though um, that usually makes a really cool looking calf. You get what's called a smoky calf with a, you know, have a lot, have a white face. They call it a blaze face calf. People like those. So those sell pretty well. Um, the one problem with crossbreeds is that if you get one that's got multiple colors on it, where it's not just kind of a solid color, it's got spots and stuff, um, people don't, don't, won't pay as much for those. But generally you're going to end up with a bigger calf, a bigger, healthier calf. Even if it's so, if, if he doesn't sell for as much, you know, per pound, you're going to have more pounds. So it kind of comes out in the wash at the end of the day. But that's the idea with the, the Charlets out here, the Charlet Bulls, on all these cows. This is all just an experiment. We're going to see who does the best, um, what I like and what I don't like. And the uh, these red girls here, they should throw a calf that's kind of uh, like a yellow, kind of orange and I, I don't know how those do at market. I suspect not so well. Um, but the smoky calves, um, which I expect to get off most of these uh, black girls here. And uh, can you say that on the internet anymore? These black cows. <laughs> um, I expect them to throw gray calves. So, again, they call them smoky calves. And those sell just fine. In fact, that's uh, the guy that I bought these bulls from. That's his main market is uh, using Charlotte bulls breeding Angus cows. And you get that Charlet Angus Cross, that smoky calf, and they do really well, uh, both as steers. They put on weight fast, and and these bulls should their calves should put on weight pretty quick, uh, which is what I want. So we call that a, a terminal bull. 
uh, meaning that I just need to get them to, uh, I just need to get them weaned and, and get them out of here to market. So I need them to get as big as possible, as fast as possible. And Charlays are, are pretty good for that, should be. Um, they, they carry a little bit more fat, so. They should be a little bigger, a little heavier, a little better looking, so. Anyway, that's the idea. I'm gonna let, get out of here and let these guys do their thing. Like I said, evenings and mornings, that's when the bulls do the most work. So, alrighty, I'll get out of their way and that way they don't get shy. <laughs> we'll come out and uh, we'll look at them again later. And uh, if I have anything else to show you, I will. Yeah, buddy. Get her. <laughs> Number two looks like to check them out. That's that Brahmin cow. Dang it. Just missed it. She just got bred. <laughs> Crap. I was walking over here uh, specifically to watch them. He's been chasing her for a minute. Well, missed it. Uh, I'm over here on foot. I lost some hardware in the pasture over there, so I've been walking for several hours now trying to find it. Oh, wait. He's going to get her again. Nope. Yeah, I got back out here by the hay barn. Decided to walk out here and watch these guys for a little bit. Of course, I just missed it again. Just got across that little soggy spot. Sure looked like you got her that time. They're all coming into heat, which is cool. That, that's what I expected. That's what I want. Want them all to be within, you know, a couple weeks of each other. So cows, they come into heat every, uh, I think it's 21 days. And then these guys, where's the other one at? It's off over there. He's got about uh, 16 to 18 hours to get her. Okay. His face on the other side of her, he's throwing his lip up in the air. It's a good sign. She stopped there for him. Ah, come on. <laughs> it's like they know they're being recorded. They're shy. Not shy until I start the camera. Oh, yeah, nice. She's just peeing. <laughs> ah, see that lip? See him throwing his lip up in the air? That's what you want to see. And him too now. Look at him. Oh yeah, so what, what that's telling me is that he's smelling whatever pheromone she's laying down. He knows that she's in heat. May have finally got one. Oh, he didn't make it. All right, you can see it hanging out, he missed. Ah, missed again. Oh, she's running from him now. She stood for him twice. <laughs> Come on, dude, seal the deal. Well, what I'd wanted to show was uh, if they get in, right, if he actually is able to insert, <laughs> uh, he'll give it a few kind of test humps, and if he makes it home, and he gives her one last big hit and then he comes and then if it's successful her back end will hunch up for like a minute that's how you know they're bred now i've seen it uh probably 10 times at this point but i can't seem to catch it on camera so that's what i was wanting to show you guys 
a whole successful process here. I'll keep trying, but uh, losing the light. So I'm going to walk back and head home, I guess. Anyway, I'll keep trying. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's fun for me to watch, but it's you know because they're my animals, I guess. They're all just cruising around out here. Up until now, all I've done is just eat grass. Now they're all getting bred, though. So there's at least, you know, I say I've seen it <laughs> uh, about 10 times. Well, sometimes it's the same cow, two or three times. So I know at this point I've got at least six of them bred. You see, they're chasing her hard. It's just a matter of time. I know as soon as I put the camera up, they're going to get her. But I got to head back. So, all right, be back tomorrow. Well, hey guys, so it's uh, Saturday night, and I just realized I forgot to make the video for this week. So it's going to be a little bit late, but <laughs> anyway, got bulls this week. Uh, pretty cool. I've been trying to get a uh, shot of them actually going through the hole, chasing the cow down and breeding her and just haven't, I've seen it plenty of times. I just haven't been able to get the camera out in time to, to actually see it. So uh, anyway, sorry this video is going to be late, but uh, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.